So first of all, thank you all for coming. Um, we're about to reopen the museum. Uh, we were very lucky through Tom's persistence and eloquence. We have the Paul Revere exhibit extended for uh, several months past when it was supposed to close last spring. Congressman Trejo, we're very happy to have you here. Thank you so much for your steadfast support for the museum. We got a $400,000 grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities to help reinstall the rest of the museum. You'll see the, some of the reinstallation today, but we'll reinstall phase two in October, phase three in April. And thanks to the Paycheck Protection Program, um, we are going to emerge from this reinstallation process next spring a brand new revitalized museum, hopefully at the time that we will achieve a vaccine and we'll hit the ground running. Great. So, Great. I have to say on a personal note, I'm a history guy with a history major in college. Um, but my wife's and I, uh, philanthropy is really focused around education, cancer, and the environment. Great. My involvement with the museum is totally because of its educational mission. <laughs> and I'm incredibly proud of what we do in education and particularly the Paul Revere's Bright Program, which brings students from Lawrence and Old here, many of whom are not native English speakers. They're taken out of English classes, out of social studies classes, to learn English as a second language. And we have the opportunity to give them some insight into the history of the founding of our country and to teach them why their parents brought them. So, welcome. Thank you. Turn it over to you. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you so much. And thank you, Tom, for inviting me back. It's so lovely to be back here. Uh, and also um, thrilled to be able to see the Paul Revere exhibit. You know, the last time I was here, there were some students from my hometown of Lowell who were uh, taking in uh, the exhibits and, of course, this, this beautiful uh, building. And uh, I don't think that there's a... There is a time in our country's history where it's been validated more the importance of teaching our young people history. Maybe science is rivaling history right now, but there's no question that when our young people can see uh, how important Concord, how important this region was to uh, the birth of our country, uh, and all the way through to, until uh, now, it's just nothing beats um, that education. And so I'm really excited to see what you all have planned uh, and excited to see future exhibits. I know that there's a Woman of Concord exhibit that's going to be opening soon. And just know that you'll always be able to count on me to not just advocate, but also be scrappy in helping you get those uh, national uh, endowment for the Humanity Grants because uh, I see how your tentacles reach out to all of our communities. You bring those students here. Nothing beats the education and sort of the the touching and the feeling and the the uh, the, the distinct importance, um, the role that we played here in terms of our, our country. In fact, I was just admiring uh, the Concord the Concord mask and. You know, I think all of us as members of Congress, we sort of jockey for position in terms of the significance our districts play, not just in the economy, uh, but also in our country's history. And I feel as though I've got them all beat. <laughs> so I'm going to go to the gift shop and get one of those, uh, those masks, just as a reminder <laughs> to folks where, you know, how important our, our region is to, uh, to the birth of our nation. So thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to see the exhibit. It's certainly. Can't wait to come back uh, when this is open and everyone can see sort of the glory of the renovation of the building, the exhibits, the permanent exhibits that you all have uh, in store for us. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Let me just uh, again reiterate that uh, we're so pleased you could come the day before we officially reopen. So we are uh, reopening to the public tomorrow. Um, and you know, we'll do time tickets and be sure that we keep social distance. Um, <laughs> We've extended the Paul Revere exhibit uh, until October, so it was supposed to close in June, but because of the pandemic, we were able to offer it to the public until uh, Columbus Day. Uh, then um, we hope to have you back. The $400,000 NEH grant is going to help us to reopen a pretty spectacular new um, exhibit on April 19th, 1775. Um, and we also have plans uh, to launch a website at the same time, and uh, actually we have commitments from the Archivist of the United States and perhaps the Chairman of NEH to help us launch that oh, website. So we'll include you in that event as well so you can show again the great things that are happening in your district. Um, and again, just to 
uh, remind everyone that we um, will have our fully renovated uh, museum opening next June. So we'll have you back. So we're doing a phased approach. And um, again, phase one, we opened at, at you here. Oh, I always love one. <laughs> 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 You were here for our uh, grand reopening uh, for the first phase after our renovations, and so phase two is the April 19th galleries, and then um, phase three, which is the final phase, will open uh, next June, and that'll be the whole transcendentalist period, and I'll also look at kind of Concord's work and home life. So.